Welcome back. Panelists here, Matthew Connetti, Editor-in-Chief of the Washington Free Beacon. Former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards of Maryland. Eliana Johnson, National Political Reporter for Politico. And New York Times columnist David Brooks. Welcome. Happy Sunday after the midterms. David, I want to ask this. Did, did the midterms change anything? Let me put up these numbers here. 46% was the president's popular vote total in 2016. 46% was the House vote for the Republicans in 2018. And 45%, and it perhaps gets reweighted to 46%, will be the president's job rating. Um, I think I sense a pattern here. <laughs> but I guess, did any, the midterms change anything? I think they entrench things. We've got like a big wall, a big barricade around that 46%. And that's Trump's base, and they come out for him, and I don't see anybody leaving that wall or going into the wall. <laughs> and so we're sort of stuck with the wall. This election, to me, was not a realigning election. It was just an entrenching election. Interesting. But the things that leapt out at me is his people did show up. The surge in Republican turnout was not automatic, and that tells me the working class is still hurting in this country despite the economy. And then the second thing I think you saw is I think the New Democrats, there's always a spin debate among the Democratic Party, was the progressives who did really well or the New Democrats, the more moderates. And the more moderate ones have a very good story to tell this year, that they flipped 23 red seats with sort of the, the people who were in, embraced by the moderate Democrats. So there is a... There is some moderation still in America. It's a lot of Republicans who used to be Orthodox Republicans who are now moderate Democrats. I want to put up something that Rich Lowry wrote. He wrote this. Midterm losses typically humble a sitting president of the United States, but Donald Trump is beyond humbling. It will be a high-stakes combat of the sort he thrives on. The more intense, perilous, and dramatic, the better, because he will be at the center of it all. Eliana. You know, I think what we've seen from the president over the past two years, there were questions about whether he would become presidential in the job. And I think what we've seen is he's a skilled communicator, but he doesn't have a lot of range or ability to switch gears. So what we get from him is um, a number of meditations on American carnage, whether it's on immigration or post midterms, uh, Democrats stealing the vote in places where he lost. Um, and that's what we're going to get for uh the two years uh, from here until 2020. And as David mentioned, that does get the president's base out, but it doesn't expand the electorate. And now the question for Democrats is, can they put up a candidate going forward that expands theirs and eats into uh, some of the Obama-Trump voters who turn out for the president and are proving extremely loyal to him and who he's very skilled at uh, communicating with? Donna, was this a referendum on the president? Well, I think it was a rebuke of the president. I think it, we began the week on election night with a modest but significant victory for Democrats. By the end of the week, it had really cr uh, crested into a, a blue wave. And where I look at promises for the Democrats going forward is in states like Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin that were really significant victories in Southern Virginia. And that, to me, says uh, where the Democrats need to place their eggs in the 2020 basket. Matthew, what do you make of the president? It did seem as if he, he moved faster on um, Jeff Sessions than even Jeff Sessions was prepared for, to the point of Sessions made it clear, I was asked for this resignation, which is Washington speak for, you need to call out a firing. Well, we've seen this with Donald Trump since he descended down that escalator three years ago. When he's hit with the setback, he immediately pivots and creates a new controversy where he may have a more solid ground. So have things changed? Of course they've changed. The Democrats are going to be in charge of the United States House of Representatives. That is a big deal. And so we've already seen with uh, Chairman, Schiff, Chairman Designate Schiff that there will be investigations, the chance for conservative legislation. Not that there was much passed this year anyway, right. but the chance going forward is greatly diminished. And was it a referendum on Trump? Yes. What we've seen again and again, I think really since 1994, is that these midterm elections are referendums on referenda on the president. And typically, the voters don't like what's happening, whether that president's a Democrat or a Republican. Matt Whitaker, David Brooks, what do we make of him? The, the arguments that he's even constitutionally, uh, it's even a constitutional appointment. You know, I think one of the, I went to 23 states this election and heard the word unraveling over and over again, that the country is unraveling. It's, are we racially together? Are we economically together? Are we morally together? And are our institutions together? And one of the things Donald Trump, the way he threatens our institutions is he personalizes power. We, you don't serve the Constitution, you serve Donald Trump. And so he wants people who will serve him. And that is not how the Attorney General's office is supposed to act. It's supposed to serve the constitutions. So to me, this is a, another threat to one of our institutions. And another one is, is the way we, uh, we bark at the refs on the, uh, the elections. Yeah. And when you, when you accuse somebody of corruption without any evidence, 
you're destroying the social fabric to some degree. And we've seen a lot of that this week. So we're seeing institutional decay. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I agree with David. I mean, I think that, um, you know, the president has gone after one institution after, uh, after the other, and you see that in this uh, call of corruption in these, in these elections, not to allow an election to be settled. And what I see is a president who really does feel that he's under threat, and so if you look at his response by both firing sessions, appointing uh, Whitaker, who is, has, you know, made himself known to the president uh, so that he could take advantage of that, and then you look at Democrats' response, I think it's going to be important to be really judicious about how they pr proceed. You know, the Whitaker appointment to me was reminiscent of the administration's policy on child separation, where it was something that the president thought about and wanted to do, put in an acting attorney general who could uh, sit there for 210 days and who was skeptical of the Mueller probe, and yet you see the president uh, skeptical of it and backing away because he didn't anticipate the blowback that he would get from Democrats and Republicans alike. And it really, I think, revealed how even the best laid plans of this administration um, aren't so well thought through and that his, I think, statements uh, hadn't been uh, reviewed by the White House and tend to backfire. And then you have a president who abandons them very quickly. What do you make of that? I think almost any attorney general who succeeds Sessions is probably going to have a critical view of the Mueller probe, just because most Republicans now have a critical view of the Mueller probe. There are two sets of criticisms of Whitaker. One is kind of the formal criticism, well, is the appointment even constitutional? Right. Those I think are pretty, at least disputed and probably even weak. The, the more substantive criticism is, is he qualified for the job? And then when you just look at the uh, resume, he's one of our lesser qualified uh, attorney generals, <laughs> if I can be charitable. Um, so that, I think, is a, a problem for the president, and that he has to come up with someone to replace Whitaker and emphasize the temporary on the temporary appointment. It's very interesting. It seems like some of the candidates are pulling out because they'd like to wait to see what Mueller does. I don't think they want to be on the front lines. Chairman Schiff said, you're coming in front of Congress with whatever action you do anyway. We'll take a pause here. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.